The Xbox 360. We get it before it gets... Oh, never mind. We finally got one, though, and we're going to manhandle it today. Plus, is Perfect Dark Zero worth the long lines at Best Buy? Find out after my first 50. And finally, is Eon Flux a slick, futuristic action movie, or that stuff your uncle takes for heartburn? Find out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Now brought to you in full color, Afghanistan animation. It's attack of the show. Big up on this. Welcome, or welcome back, for that matter, We've to been Attack gone for of the a while. Show. It has been a little while. How it you has. doing? It's good. I'm, I feel like I'm about to sneeze. Okay, but, well, you, you take know, your time with that don't one. Don't worry about me. Other than that, uh, everybody, we were gone for a couple days because of Thanksgiving. Yes, we had a couple we were. days off. And I don't know if you noticed this uh, at home <laughs> or Sarah, if you noticed this. You all right? Yeah. You need no, a second. I'm, I'm, I'm trying Good? to swallow. Look it. Look into the light. You'll be all right. No, don't do that. Okay. So. Uh, oh, over no. the Thanksgiving break, the media was talking a lot about how horrible travel was going to be. Well, travel yes. wasn't a big deal for me. I got to be honest. Me either. Got Flew in out of LAX. LAX. No problem. No problem. In fact, it was almost better than a lot of Friday nights that I've flown out. Completely agree. The other thing they were talking about, which I didn't notice at all, and my family does. I, are you familiar with Black Friday? Well, I am now because that's all everybody talks about. Right. I, I feel like I didn't know about Black Friday two years ago. Well, it I did it exist. Wasn't even a thing. It did exist. It just didn't get the sensationalist hype that it did. I mean, Black in Friday sounds years, like a plague or something. <laughs> Bit. Something a, really bad, dun, dun, not dun. like like a big shopping. Yeah, but thing. you know, like local Channel Six will do an expose on the bleachers of doom and how bleachers are killing babies. So it's like, <laughs> you, of course, they're going to hype a shopping day. Like they've got it nothing a, else to it do. It is a plague of, so, of sorts. So Black Friday is the day after Thanksgiving. It's where all the retailers they open their doors super early, sometimes midnight, sometimes 5 a.m. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they say, "Come on in. We've got free snow globes and toe socks for the first <laughs> hundred people." And and. Uh, idiots go crazy for this crap. Well, Kevin, not idiots. People who like a good bargain. Consumers. Consumers. American consumers. Consumers who want to save a little bit this holiday yeah. season. They're willing to step on people. Absolutely they are. And every, every, every single news network that I was watching showed the same looping footage of like a woman losing her wig at Walmart, getting knocked over. That was Somebody sad. getting stepped on. It's all very sad. But yeah. I, I'd like to believe these are isolated incidents. And then I see a poll on CNN. And I kid you not, like I'm at a friend's house, I had to stop him, the Busatil family, how's it going by the way, sorry about that, I interrupted their, their te television viewing for a good 15 minutes while we had to go and pause on this poll, and it says, who would you knock to the, what would you, what would you knock someone to the ground for? What? Is what the CNN so poll saying, was asking. So they're we know you're going to knock someone over because that's the kind of person you are, so of course. What, what, what will it take? Exactly. And as you can <laughs> see, the options, they were like, you know, option A was, was for a, a, like a flat, a $400 laptop, then we have a flat screen TV, an Xbox 360, of course D is, is the sweet one, Go all of the CNN. above. Go CNN. Yeah. So, I mean, this wow. upsets me for multiple reasons. One, because you're right. It assumes that people are just going to knock people over, and yeah. it, almost, it almost makes it okay because you're justifying it. And two, that, that someone got paid to come up with that poll. Like, that really disappointed me that there was well, a room actually, of people at CNN. I'm kind of jealous about that. I'm a little jealous as well, <laughs> which is why we decided to spend most of our time here today coming up with our own poll. <laughs> yeah. Since we're back, let's have some fun. We took know? a different approach, though. Different approach. A different slant on the, uh, on the survey. We wanted to know what, you would tra what, what kind of people you would trample or who you would trample uh -huh. for the following items. You've got the items, what kind of people are going down for them. Exactly. Uh -huh. Who are you going to take out for a Robo Raptor, an iPod Nano, or an Xbox 360? All very good gifts. Of course, if they were good, Black you know. Friday deals, you'd be trampling some folks. Absolutely. So for a Robo Raptor, not a big ticket item, of course. Nice. You know, I'd trample, uh, I'd trample an old lady. Oh, I'd should, knock one down. She's going to go down anyway, of course. probably. And, and I mean, you, know, you only kind of have to gently touch. Push. Yeah, it's a, it's a gentle rub. You can sure. even pass it off. And she'll probably take down two babies with her. Okay. That's the way we see it. A little bit of a Old domino woman and effect. Two babies. Yeah, and the babies would swallow on the Robo Raptor parts anyways, so I'm not too concerned. So, Robo Raptor, you, want it, you don't want it that bad. No, no. But it's um, bad Then enough. again, an iPod Nano, that's <laughs> a pretty good gift. That's something I would really like in my stocking. So, for an iPod Nano, we'd trample, um, let's say, a pregnant woman. Oh, okay. Um, and maybe a kid on crutches. Oh. That's not polite. Well, you. again, again. You can still use the nano. Again, That's not nice. They're both, you know, they've got their own problems. So it's not like I'm, you know, knocking out Hulk Hogan. All right. Yeah, I don't want it that bad. <laughs> well, I think the kid on crutches has it worse than the Hulkster, but all right. Hey, just take one crutch out, he goes down. Of course, for an extra Xbox 360, I I'm taking down any comers. I don't care if there's a blind man in the way. Boom! Sorry you didn't feel that with your cane, buddy. Two fat ladies on scooters. I don't <laughs> oh, care if they're whoa. rascals or segways. Oh, Kevin. They're getting taken down. This is getting... And, of course, that useless store greeter at the, you know, the smiley face store. 
Taking them out. The, the one who says hello and welcome for what shopping. What purpose does thank that you, person thank serve? Thank you for being here. I hope you have a great day, sir. That guy? Yeah, no, thank you, Johnny Moron. I'll get wow. my own shopping cart, and I'll stab you in the face with a ballpoint pen this to get my Xbox this 360. This joke got ugly fast. I wasn't, I wasn't joking. Oh. I'll, I'll take a blind man out. All right, well, anyway... Hopefully, uh, this will calm you down a little bit. Um, you know how Google is uh, one of those companies everybody wants to work for? Of course. They're doing really well. Yeah. They're it's it's almost they're impossible to get a the job future. there. It's almost impossible to get a job there. Yeah, it's like it's like trying to get accepted at one of you know the prestigious Ivy League sure. schools. Or an internship at G4. Or an internship at G4. <laughs> really hard. Yeah. Um, anyway, there's a kid that it wants to work for Google, and who doesn't? But he made a video resume. In Ooh. fact, he called it a resumercial. It's now, that's of, an interesting sort buzzword. Sort of a new term. So, you know, he's kind of selling himself. His name is Shane Wright. He got a BA from Brigham Young, so he's probably a nice, bright kid. Yeah, probably knows what he's doing. Um, now, he explains how he found his love for computers. Okay. So, you know, this is... When I was young, I saw a movie called The Computer Who Wore Tennis Shoes. I thought that movie was awesome. Never since that time, I've been interested in computers and the way that they can help us in our lives. All right, that movie's awesome. Love for computers. All right, yeah. that's pretty. That's a it pretty relates, good end. It relates. No, but but he didn't stop there. I mean, he really brought some original ideas to the table, um, like an idea he liked to call Google Homework. Oh. Click on a Google Homework answer to find related links for additional study. Well, thanks, Google Homework. Yeah, I'm getting A plus on this hard history test. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. He's also a rapper. I, apparently, well, no, all high school kids do the sideways hat and the backpack. He's in touch That's with the demo. True. What That's was really true. great was how he was cross-checking the Google results with his homework. He's uh. like, yeah, I got the same answers here on the moon. Well, you yeah. know, I think Google's going to appreciate that. Apparently, homework.google.com very soon, I bet. But if that wasn't enough, he even oh, has more. professional references from a great executive. Very helpful. Oh. Shane Wright is an excellent choice and would be a great asset to any organization. He's going to find the solution that you're looking for and he's going to give you what you need to be successful. I mean, if that's not a resumercial, I don't know what is. Uh, I don't know what is. I, there might be confused viewers at home, so I want to just reiterate if we can. Okay. We didn't make this person up. No, this is this is real. This is real. We found like, him on the internet. <laughs> like, he put himself online, and I think it's a real resume. I mean, that. I mean, maybe it's someone pulling pulling a joke on the Google video, but I doubt it. I, I bet no, the person's I, real. I and I don't think he's really kidding about wanting a job. Well, no, not either. at all. He I mean, put, I want a job at Google. He put on the fake mustache, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great it's executive. Business. All right, now our guest today is Wizard Online's resident live Dr. Deirdre. So, all you comic book fans, call and talk to an actual woman about your made-up sexual experiences. Aww, you could call. Come on. The number is 800-839-7880, and you can email us through our web forum as well at attackoftheshow.com slash ask us. And, of Kevin. course, they can chat with us as well, Sarah. We have an IRC chat room. Just go to your web browser. Off. Click on the address bar, put in chat.g4tv.com. And chat away. And chat away. And maybe, maybe even chat with the lovely brother Moran <gasps> we have on the couch today. Well. What's up? How you doing? I ate so much turkey, Kevin, over the weekend. That's nice. We shoved a uh, Cornish game hen. All right. Into the turkey. Oh, into oh the, my. Okay, okay. Oh, wow. Oh. oh, I can barely move. That's a little... That's a Anyways. little more Moran. Is that real? That, that's a taste of what you're going to be seeing Is a little bit later. Is that a prosthetic stomach? No, that's real. Wow. That was a whole lot more Moran than I cared to see today, <laughs> that i got to be honest. That was amazing. Wow. Can we, you want to do it once more? No, we don't. All right. Yeah, no. Commercial breaks. You'll have to keep sitting through them until you wise up and get a TiVo. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is, mm -hmm. Sarah. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, we'll attack the Xbox 360 from all sides. But before that, before we get to that, we have to actually take a moment. Uh, get a little serious on you. Over the weekend, we lost a significant entertainment icon, and this has really inspired us to think about exactly why death sucks. And now, Five Reasons Death Sucks, the Pat Morita edition. He was a stand-up comic and actually dubbed himself the Hip Nip. Owned Arnold's Diner on Happy Days, providing refuge for bikers and guys named Potsy. Was so committed to his role as emperor in Disney's Mulan, he returned for Mulan 2 actually appeared in Hawaii Five-O, playing a character named Phoebe in an episode entitled Tricks Are Not Treats. He was only 73 years old. Now, last week, as you may have heard, the Xbox 360 finally got out of your dreams and into your car. Unless you actually wasted quality line waiting time with your family, 
like a total lame ass. Of course, we put aside all interpersonal contact so we could get our hands on one, and it's right here. And today, we're going to dig into it. Brandon Moran, 360, 360, Brandon Moran. Hi, 360. How's it going? That's what he would say back to you, because he's I'm a nice guy. I'm okay. How was yeah. your weekend? It was fantastic. I enjoyed a very successful launch, and I want you to look at my uh, rich multimedia and online features. Oh, okay. That sounds like fun. Cool. All right. That was, that was actually a little odd. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, I'm here. I know, it's my bad. Anyway, uh, so it's, it does more than play games, Brendan. You know the 360, a powerful gaming machine, yada, yada. I saw a lot about it. Yeah, everybody's talking about it this weekend. People got trampled, as we know, awesome. to get them. Well, now it's all about the features, and we finally got it online. We opened up the box, and here it is. Uh, we're going to start off with some of the online features, if you will. So I've logged in to is, my profile. Is here. that the big thing for you, Kevin, the online? I, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the many big things. Okay. I just love the interface, too. Look at these little blades. Look at these little things. They're different colors, too, so you, that's, that's got to be Yeah, good. you know you're not in the orange blade here. No, that's the green you're one. You're the green blade. Exactly. Very color-coordinated, and we appreciate that, Microsoft. They're like high-tech manila folders. So if I want, I can go on to Xbox Live. I'm obviously signed in as myself here, and they've offered all sorts of cool content for you right out of the box. So I could go to demos and trailers. I could pull up. Uh, they have, like, high-def music videos that you can download for free. Uh, we can list list. Are they good? By games. Yeah, they're good. Good variety yeah. of music there. I mean, There's some it... Franz Ferdinand in there. All right. There's some Audio Slave. But again, this is free, high-def content that you're streaming. I mean, this is kind of like IPTV has arrived. If you don't believe it, it's here. You're downloading it to your console, watching it on your high-def television. You turn it on, you go to the live thing, and you can download whatever you want. Done. Done and done. What about, now, what about paying for it? Well, some of the content you do have to pay for. You use game credits for that. And thankfully, it's not all that expensive. Like, like for a little icon for your character, it costs you about 50 cents. Oh, like, I'm already, getting, I'm already getting all sorts of friends and bites at the bottom of the screen. So that's awesome. Uh, let's wait for the profanity to start rolling in very soon. Sweet. Live television. Um, so... You know, you can download the free stuff like that. Now, for the Xbox Live service, you get six months free right out of the box, which is also nice as well. Okay. Uh, so that's just an example of, you know, there's some extra media for you. It looks awesome. It looks really good. And there's also the Xbox Live Arcade, which is really, this is GameTap's worst nightmare as far as I'm concerned. I love the GameTap service. I've talked about it a long time. But as you can see here, you go to our arcade game section. We've already downloaded a game. Again, a free trial version of it right here, Geometry Wars. You can download whatever you want right there. Those yeah, are all it, free, just... And they're all arcade games that you would otherwise have to pay for. Correct, correct. And That's so we can go, you know, we can look at all games. I can look under action games. I can look under strategy games, etc. And you get free trials of all. But, I mean, you can be playing Smash TV for free pretty much right out of the box, at least a trial of it, which is great. It's games on demand on your console, on your HD TV. So if you actually don't have any games, right? if you just bought this and said, oh, my God, I forgot right. now about I'm plumb, the games. Now I'm plumb out of money. What have I done? Dark. I'm an idiot. I can go and download... Arcade games. Exactly. There's no need to, to push your mom to the Christmas smart, tree. That's smart, Microsoft you can play 360. Some games, and you can pay for them as well. Mm -hmm. But what I really like are the media features, and that's, that's some really good stuff. Uh, I wanted to show that off real quickly. First of all, if you pop in a music CD, it's going to connect online, assuming it's a retail actual purchase CD, sure. and download all the track titles, the album info, etc., which is really nice. But as you see, we've got a thumb drive hooked up to the front of the Xbox 360 here, so I can load it up, portable device. So let's just go in. And uh, let me just select a song that I have on there. Oh, it's what do you know? It's the Attack of the Show theme song. Right? Oh, boy. Yeah. Let's load up this you bad can get boy that? here. Uh, no, it's on my thumb drive. Oh. So we're going to play the song oh, off the thumb yes. drive. We hear the song. And this is, I mean, the Jeff Minter, the guy from Lamasoft. He did the visualizer. He did everything here. Pop it up full screen and really just trip out your pets. And That's your what comes up when you play the uh, Attack of the Show. Yeah, and you have full, well, it's just a visualizer, so it's going to react to the music. And you have well, full control that. over it. You can go through all the presets. Okay. You can actually play with the visualizer, which is nice. Uh, so, again, it's just... They, they've really just taken everything that they wanted to do, I think, with the original Xbox and Xbox Live and made it happen. And it works, and it's fluid, and it's all coherent, and the interface is easy to use. Are you impressed by it? How much time have you kind of spent? I spent, I spent quite a while with it. Uh, Were you in line? Uh, I'm sorry? Were you in line? I was, I was covering the line. I was standing next to the line with the microphone for the launch. But then after that, did you, have to, did you have to put the microphone down and then kind of get to the back of the line? Oh, no, no, I shanked somebody. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, right, no, right well, away. No, that's smart. You are TV's coming. <laughs> exactly. I can get away with murder, essentially, because I'm adorable. Uh, another thing we tested out, by the way, just as a real quick side note, was the backwards compatibility. Uh, backwards compatibility only works if you have the hard drive version. Uh, and, you know, some people want to play their back library of Xbox One games. Well, the good news is that some games work, like Halo and Halo 2. You know, those will work Imagine pretty that. much right out of the box. But for other games, you know, like for Max Payne here, or even, I mean, this one, Barbie, of course, if you want the Barbie horse adventure. Does that work? It does work. Thank you. They, they took the time to uh, make sure that it works. The, the hitch okay. is that you either have to have it connected online to Xbox Live so it can download a patch for each individual game, or you have to download and burn it to a CD or order it from Microsoft, etc. So basically, if you don't have Xbox Live, it's going to be a real hassle to play backwards compatible games. But 
you can do it, they do work, etc. Okay. There you have it. Thank you, Kevin, for your comprehensive review. That's what I do. For more info and stuff, go to our website. It doesn't bite. Now, I know you're too doped up on leftover turkey to move, so stop it. I was just... Oh, right. Just yeah. nod your head <laughs> if you want to hear Kevin's take on the Xbox 360 game, Perfect Dark Zero. Okay, good, because it's next. Oh, they nodded. They all nodded. This role-playing game out in 2004 returns to the world of Azeroth, where heroes like Leroy Jenkins do battle. And that would be the world of Warcraft. Oh, sad for so many reasons. Leroy's clearly jumped the shark, and no college students know about the Jenkins? Are you kidding me? Leroy! Every yeah. self-respecting college student knows about Leroy. All right, anyway, moving on. That was on Jeopardy, that was a real question, and nobody actually got the answer. Tear. Now, will my first 50 cause you to make a 180 about the 360? Perhaps. <laughs> Sir, the beauty about Attack of the Show is that mm. we can connect directly with the viewers, the fans, if you will. That's true. That and is that is a beautiful thing. I went in the uh, old chat room during the uh, commercial break. I was on the forums, and apparently <laughs> they haven't heard me ramble on and on about the 360 enough yet. Believe it or not. Well, I certainly haven't, and I was hoping you might do it for, I don't know, two minutes and 30 seconds? Maybe three minutes and 15. <laughs> Who knows? But we're talking about Perfect Dark Zero on the Xbox, a full circle. Well, I'm glad to be here, Kevin. Uh, I'm glad to have you here, Sarah Lane. Thanks. We're going to take you through the old Perfect Dark Zero, but of course, developed by Rare. The game has been in development for the last 23 years. Stop it. It's a real, real long development cycle on this <laughs> one. Uh, but it's finally out. You can actually get it. There's a limited edition version uh, that you definitely shouldn't waste your money on. But I'm going to talk about the, the regular old Perfect Dark Zero here. OK. Uh, the storyline. Uh, don't really know it. Gotta be honest, and I that's think one of the you problems. You probably have some adversaries, and you want to shoot them. Well, you're, you're, yes, that is a, that is a good. I mean, a good I'm just, guess. that's just kind of what I'm coming up. You're with. kind of like, you're, you're playing, of course, as Joanna Dark, and this is set uh, before the original Perfect Dark Zero. You're traveling around the world as this bounty hunter, you know, okay. along alongside with your father. Essentially, you're killing bad guys left and right. The, the the story really doesn't make you care, but and I agree with with Gamespot's review of the game. Essentially, that you don't care. You don't care that the story really doesn't seem to matter, and that it's got a bunch of loose ends, etc. Because you know what? It looks great. And it smells like next gen, but unfortunately, it's a little far from perfect. Okay. It's not exactly the perfect dark, if you will. Now, you said, I mean, you're kidding about the 23 years, but it, I mean, is this something that. It was in development that... for a long time, went from system to system to system, mm -hmm. and it's finally now been released on the 360. But, but much to Rare's credit, they clearly took advantage of the 360 power, because the game, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. The animations are solid. Just even, even watching, you know, Joanna reload a weapon mm -hmm. is sweet as can be. But of course. Do you like playing a lady? I love playing a lady. Mm -hmm. I absolutely I get love that. it. I get yeah. that feeling about you. In fact, when you do a barrel roll, it puts the camera behind her, and I found myself just rolling from A to B just to watch her oh my gosh. in the spandex. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was great. It's Joanna. Um, but before you get to the meat of the story, you have to play through a bunch of training missions, which I found a little kind of boring. i got to mm -hmm. be honest. I understand they're training missions, but at least try to make it. Nobody wants to do You don't want to go into training. You just want to go full-fledged. Exactly. Give me something interesting yeah. to do while I'm training, at least. I don't want to go to training camp so it's, for it's, babies. It's kind of standard fare as, part as, as far as the first-person shooter goes. But then, of course, there's multiplayer, which is a big deal. And just like the, the original offering on the Nintendo, the game supports one to four players offline. Of course, you have your standard split screen for multiplayer and co-op which thank, thank, thank the dear Lord they included co-op. And it's not just two versions of Joanna running around either. You play as kind of like a different character as well, which is nice. But I do enjoy that they added bots, you know, or that you can play with bots, rather. Even in your offline experience, you can have up to 15 bots running around offline. And you can even have them running around online with up to 32 other players if you want, you know. Not bad, for not as far as multiplayer is concerned. You know, I want to know, Kevin, you, you always get so excited about multiplayer. Why don't you ever uh, invite me to be on one of your teams? Well, because girls aren't good at video games. Oh. Yeah, it's just, it's not, it's, it's science, you know, it's kind of okay. biological. I, it at this was point. just something I always kind of wondered about. Yeah, no, so. that's it. And, okay, and I, I mean, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, did I mention <laughs> the game looks good, though? 
<laughs> you did. Let, let's look at the gameplay <laughs> and the graphics here. This is this is where they, where it's at. Of course, it's a very coherent shooter. You can dual wield. You can only you know you can carry X amount of weapons at a time. Very kind of Halo esque. You do have uh, you know body armor as well as a recharging health system, which is nice. You can duck uh, duck for cover pretty much anywhere just with a simple press of the A button and shoot behind cover, which is nice. And the weapons are actually very fun. And there's so many of them. You know, you, from shotguns to pistols to sniper rifles. They all have secondary fire modes. Uh, you know, some will bring up radars. Some will let you see through walls. And and because it's an Xbox 360 game, it, it, of course, it supports the high def. So resolutions from 720p and 1080i, it's all there. It all looks good. Pick your homicidal tool, and uh, you'll be happy. And just run with it. And yeah. just run with <laughs> There's it. There's nothing else to Literally. do. Literally. Uh, but unfortunately, with all that said, ah. Uh, I, and I want to believe, and I don't mean eh? to be, yeah, I got, because after the graphics were off, you're, you realize you're not playing Half-Life 2. And I don't mm. mean to sound like that big of a uh -huh. fanboy, yeah. but just kind of mad. So the game is in stores now. Kind of mad. It, it, look, if you have an Xbox 360 and an irrational feel, fear of uh, World War-based shooters, then, then you can pick up Perfect Dark Zero. If not, you know, go with Call of Duty 2. If you're phobia free, remember, the game's a try it. Sorry, guys. Kevin, you're brutally honest. I, I like that about it's you. It's what I do. I do it for the kids. You do. Now, we get questions all the time about what music we're listening to. Yes. Uh, in fact, people were wondering, you know, what should in I put fact, on? In fact, that's a chat question every single day. Every <laughs> single day. And we and always we ignore end up it. taking it. Do we? Kind of. Oh, I guess we do in, in some ways. And but... it's always from that one guy. What, running with scissors or whatever that guy no, was? No, uh, Sith Master. Sith Master, yes. He's Sith in there all the like, time. I feel like he's my best friend. Never met him. Well, Sarah, we decided we'd finally answer this question and kind of give you an update on our current playlist. Yes. So We're going to talk about music. Why not? We can do why it. Why not? We drink on the show now. <laughs> we might as well just talk about some music to <laughs> drink to. Talk about some of the parties. I'm going to see this band right here at the Troubadour uh, in December. Their first show was uh, sold out, so I'm going to Monday's show. Oh, what's the name? This is a Panic at the Disco. Panic at the Disco. Now, immediately, live journal ears start popping up all across the country because this is about as like high schoolish emo as you get. I really? mean, it's like, oh yeah, it's like, it's crazy emo pop. And I swore I would never enjoy music like this, but I'm telling you. So the disco thing is just a cutesy name. It's not disco. It's like emo pop, kind it's of. It's like emo pop. But I got to tell you, kudos to the boys who put this one together because track to track, high energy, it's really good emo stuff. All You'll right. enjoy it. The next one, unfortunately, kind of hard to get. Uh, I, you know, I would never, ever, you know, uh, support bit torrenting an album, but you know, you might have to. Uh, Spongle. It's a band called Spongle. <laughs> like, Basically, two this? guys. They do some really good music. Their, 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 their latest album, and unfortunately, it's their last album, is Nothing Lasts, But Why, Nothing Is up? Lost. Uh, I think they just decided to release three albums, and one oh. of them was like a remix. Well, maybe, they'll, maybe they're working on the fourth. I hope so. Yeah. I'd love to see a Spongle reunion tour. Why do you think they're so hard to get a hold of if they're so good? Well, I, I think it's I think it has more to do with their label, probably, and the distribution. You can't even get their latest album at Amazon. You have to search for it through other sites. It's too bad Amoeba doesn't uh, yeah. ship. Yeah. Delivery. Well, at any rate, I recommend the Spongle to anybody. Yeah, they're a good group. They've got a very kind of trippy, uh, hallucinogenic-inspired kind of sound, which is very nice. You know, Kevin, were you like a fan of your parents' music from the 70s when you were in oh, high school? Yeah. Did you go through that phase? My dad had like Golden Oldies Volume 1 through 400, and we had to listen to it ad nauseum. Well, that's a little older than what I was talking about. But no, um, my I dad's old. <laughs> <laughs> like his Golden Oldies are what you're talking Hi, about. Hi, Mr. Pereira. Anyway, I'm still kind of in that phase from time to time, um, and that is why I'm going to go. I'm going to kick it back. We're going way back oh, here all right. with little Bob Dylan. Oh, we're not pop-locking uh, to Bob Dylan, sorry. No, yeah. Bob Dylan, um, one of my very favorite albums of his, of which there are many, this one's called Blood on the Tracks. So this is from 1974, right. so this is before any of us. He sang well, Tambourine Man. Well, not Andy. Man. Andy was alive then. He sang Tambourine Man. Tambourine and, Man. And, I, and I, know that, I know that because of <laughs> Dangerous Minds, where the kid tried to read it in class. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> I've Kevin. never... There's more to Bob Dylan than... Uh, many people know there was a really good PBS documentary about him recently. Right. It's great. All right, good I trust music. you there. I trust you there. Now... Uh, you might think, you know, that's the old school folk. It's not really for me. You know, folk music gets a bad rap. You always think of people and the acoustic guitars, and they're singing about flowers and love and and ganja. Is that what? Oh, oh no, I, was I, I I just I didn't know what you were doing. Flossing. I was I was trying to yeah, hippies. remind me. I get it. Hippie folk hippies. music. Uh, folk music has has uh, is still alive and well today. Oh. There is there is a man. Um, there's and, one dude left, <laughs> still making it. There's quite a few, but there's one in particular. Now, I call him Sufjan Stevens. Okay. There has, you know, some people Gesundheit. say maybe it's Sufjan. You know, he was sort of a, you know, a... Uh, he doesn't care, he's a hippie. A, a Nordic type of thing. He, uh, what his thing is, this particular album is called Illinois. 
uh, Illinois, uh, I suppose. What he does is he's, he is putting out albums of sort of state themes. There's a Michigan one, there's an Illinois one. One day we're going to be lucky enough to get a California one. That sounds weird, but the music is amazing, and you hear right. more, you're going to hear more and more about him. Very eclectic taste here. Eclectic and this taste. is just a peek into our playlist. There's plenty more, and maybe, maybe one day we'll talk about it for 25 minutes. Who knows? Maybe. We should, actually. Every day. Yeah. And after this break... The hits just keep on coming. The feed is number one this week, finally knocking off Kelly Clarkson. Aww. And our inside look at Eon Flux just went platinum. Stick around. <laughs> You're Welcome back to the show. Have you put on weight? Well, don't talk to me, Chunky. Call in and talk to nerd love expert Deirdre. She'll be here in a bit. And just so you can plan ahead... This week's Boost Mobile Live Band is from Satellites. From Satellites. Now, history teaches us that following up an Oscar-winning dramatic performance with anything requiring a cat suit doesn't really work out that well. Remember? Are you referencing another? No. No, I'm just saying. Oh. You know, in general. But Charlize Theron isn't being plagued by Halle Berry nightmares. Uh -oh. Yeah, I kind of was. I kind of was. I was just She's just ready to kick ass, take names, rinse, and repeat as Eon Flux. Why am I here? Chairman Trevor Goodchild, he's uh, leader of Bregna, which is the last bastion of civilization on planet Earth 400 years from now. It's a small pocket and, and nature has, um, has rejuvenated itself. There's a, a few things that have gone awry and he's trying to find the, the key to this, the, the natural biological evolution. Maybe it's time to give up on the tests, Trevor. We're living the solution already, this is perfection. I'm the brother of the boss of the last city on Earth. I'm the brother of the chairman, and uh, I have my ideas about how he should be running the city. Um, and he wants to make some changes, and I don't think they should be made. And then uh, I take matters into my own hands, and I'm not very nice. Things change, but I know you won't. They rise up uh, in rebellion, and uh, Eon Flux is a part of that rebellion. She's just as capable as a guy, but she's got one plus, and that is that she's got an element of surprise, because nobody expects her to be that good when she walks into a situation. There's an incredible strength about her that I had to work on. I had to train for four months to kind of get that core strength. That's an energy that somebody carries, and Eon, from what Peter Chung created, is somebody who carries that very well. And she's smart, and I like that he never shied away from using that. And I think that's what gives her the advantage. We have an assignment. Good job. We want you to eliminate him. And at the central core of this is a love story, an investigation of oneself, and uh, in Trevor and Eon's case, one another. I want to remember what it feels like to be a person. I had a life once. Now all I have is a mission. Eon Flux is in theaters everywhere this Friday, and we'll have more with Ms. Theron on tomorrow's show. And now, if it's informative, edgy, and willing to tackle the real issues, it actually needs to wait a second, because we have to do the feed now. People are freaking out over the Xbox 360. And by people, I mean the media. First, there were reports of trampolines at local retailers across the country, desperate gamers risking life, limb, and a possible tear in their favorite Ubisoft promotional t-shirt to get their hands on the slinky white console. Now that that's died down, though, we have horror stories about mysterious crashing and even machines burning out completely after only 20 minutes of play. Microsoft has admitted that problems do exist, but are quick to mention that these are isolated incidents. They're not widespread. Still, don't miss tonight's special news report, wireless controllers. What you can't see can kill you. Now, former FEMA director Michael Brown has decided he's not going to just sit on the couch and agonize over all the ways he fumbled New Orleans. He's going to get back to work. Good for him. Specifically, he'll be touring the country, <coughs> offering disaster preparedness advice. 
That's right. The man who had his head in and both thumbs up his ass during the Hurricane Katrina disaster is now going to make sure others are as confused and useless as he was. But there is a bright spot in all of this. Brown's gall has inspired others to turn lemons into spiked, probably rancid lemonade. MC Hammer has already begun offering financial advice. And Angelina Jolie has hit the road to lecture on the sanctity of marriage. Now, archive.org, a non-commercial online media library, we've spoke about it on the show, has always followed that hippie ideal of sharing and freedom, except, ironically, when it comes to the Grateful Dead. Hmm. Archive.org has announced that it will no longer freely share Grateful Dead MP3s through its site. They will continue to house the files, but fans can only stream the music. They can't download it and then burn it to a CD and pop it in the old VW bus as they please. This has naturally bummed many of them out. In its defense, Archive.org says it used to be really into the dead back in college, but then they kind of lost interest once they actually had to start working for a living. Bills, man, so heavy. And finally, photocopier manufacturer Canon is taking steps to eliminate the number one problem facing office copy machines. Not paper jams, no, not even four-hour warm-up periods, fat American asses. <laughs> According to a report on CNET, the holiday season causes a 25% hike in copier service calls. The main complaint? The glass needs to be replaced because one too many walking cliches <laughs> photocopied their asses during office Christmas parties. It's gotten so bad, in fact, that Canon is experimenting with thicker glass to accommodate the ever-thickening average American. May we suggest, if you're planning such a feat at your next office party, you try something else. Instead of your ass, try something smaller, something less weight something flaccid and pathetic. Or you could just write the words, I have a drinking problem, fire me on a piece of paper, just pass it around, it's quicker in the long run. Everybody knows it anyway. And that's the feed, fatty. <laughs>for Heavy.com open up about their weight issues. Plus, Eon Flux is too big a movie for one show, so we'll make the most of our chance to talk to Charlize Theron. And finally, Chris Gorin covers the hidden Scientology messages inside the War of the Worlds DVD. That's the next almost 100% Thetan free attack of the show. Now, you've had some time to regroup, but this week we're back to our regularly scheduled Verizon broadband battle. Woo! Yay! We're playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 again this week, so clone yourself or roll the chance cube, buy some power converters, just do whatever it takes to be here. To register, go to our website and click on Join Our Land Party for all the details and links to get started. So Thursday, man, it's going to rock. Come along. Part of the magic. The now, mystery. gems of the internet, they sparkle, they shine, they make great gifts. They're like... Nature's diamonds. <laughs> Kevin, uh, have you ever thought about collecting vacuum cleaners? No, actually, no, I haven't. Well, it's too bad. However, there are some people out there you might oh, want to meet course. because there is already the Vacuum Cleaner Collectors Club. That's my first gem Don't today. Don't tell me they have their own website. Oh, they absolutely do. And their, uh, the president is, are you ready for this? Yeah. This guy. Oh, come on, His this is a joke. His name is R.J. Vanek. What he actually this is... This is a put-on. No, it's not. It's not at all because, as you see, as you uh, scroll down, R.J. has a lot of reasons why he's made. He's become you know, president for a good reason. <laughs> and he needs he's to a collect vacuum... Flobies. You know what's really weird? Uh, uh, someone in my family family collects vacuum cleaners. Oh, so wow. I know I know that it's it's a thing. It's your something family, that so people well, they're lanes. I, However, is that, um, is that how you explain it? Look, they're lanes. 
<laughs> kind of. Lance, <laughs> Lance would understand Special that. breed. kind of not actually very funny. All right, so collecting uh, uh, Collecting vacuum, vacuum cleaners. So um, RJ uh, has, has <laughs> he's put together these conventions every year, which is super awesome. We <laughs> missed the one in L.A. this year, yeah. but the 2006 St. Louis has our name right all nice. over it. Nice. So I think it does. I think we're going to go. Maybe no we'll cats. send Brendan. No cats near the convention center. They scatter immediately. Cats? Aren't they afraid of vacuums? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good call. Thank you. Hmm. After we think that, maybe. And second, number two, Jem. Are you ready for this? Ready for it. Um, well, actually, before, before, oh, we, get, before you tease. we get to I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I am a tease. You tease. I'm a total tease. Um, you know, do you, do you have apostrophe problems? It's and I it's, might. yours and yours. Oh, yeah, I do it with the it's and it's, at least. Because really? I, I was just recently corrected about this last week. My whole world has been turned upside down. I'm yeah. afraid to use it. Well, a lot of people um, have, been, have been ridiculed. They've been schooled, and they still can't get it right, and that is why something is here for your benefit. It's the Apostrophe Protection Society. That's right. Okay. It's actually a society, Kevin, and it shows you all of the things that people do that are wrong and embarrassing oh. and wrong and awful and bad for humanity. And wrong. And wrong. So, as you can see, there are some lessons here. You know, apostrophes are den you know, denote missing letters or, uh, you know, or a variety of letters, right. like I can't instead of I cannot. So on and so forth. Okay. They even have you know some some uh, lessons on possession. Can you use? Eddie, you possession? Can you use an apostrophe as a, a bullet point indicator, as they have on their website? I thought you thought it was supposed to be a circle. Kevin, that's what we call design. Oh. Intelligent design. Is that what intelligent design is? Yes. Oh, well, they should totally teach that in school. <laughs> so you can find all my gem links at attacktheshow.com, right where you left them. Woo! Now, wait a minute. Could this be Relationship Monday? I Oh. I think so. Wizard Online's resident love Dr. Deirdre takes your calls. It's coming up next. Gems of the Internet is brought to you by MX Dirt Rebel Game. Go for a ride inside. Batteries not included. We knew WizardUniverse.com was a source for comic book news and funny action figure theater and enough Guy Gardner jokes to make us king of the next Comic-Con. But did you also know that it was a place for the lovelorn? Hmm. That's right, folks. Columnist Deirdre Brooks offers advice for the comic geek in love. Or at least trying to fall in love, right, Deirdre? Yeah. Are, are, do you find that there, there are a lot of guys out there that are, that, are, that are looking for it but not finding it in that line of, uh, uh, of work, if you will? Oh, absolutely. I don't think it's just comic fans either. I mean, it's all guys, you know. Right. It's possible to be a geek on, on pretty much just about anything, you know. As Sarah's gems prove, there's vacuum geeks. <laughs> I've seen a couple mayonnaise websites. I don't know if they were fetishes or not, but you can be geeky about pretty much anything, you, you, right? I mean, yeah, pretty much. All right. So you, you give advice. You give, the, you give this advice online. Now, Sarah and I, I don't know if you realize, we're, we're very qualified to do such a thing. Every Thursday, we take relationship advice calls, uh, and, and our qualifications pretty much stem from the fact that we're on television. That's about it. No one cross-checks references or anything like that. I'm curious, how did, how, what, you know, what qualifies you for this role? How did you fall into all this? Um, well, I grew up around a lot of guys, and I've always had a lot of guy friends, mm -hmm. and so I used to get a lot of questions about advice and what to do, what to say to girls and stuff like that. And Well, I've dated a lot, so... Now, did you, did you actually give these guys the time of day? Or did you say, hey, look, okay, you're, you're being a total nerd. Let me, let me set you straight and tell you what you need to do if you want to get a woman like me in the future. No, I mean, usually I'm friends with them. It's usually the guy, ah, my friends, okay. who are asking me questions. Oh, okay, so they're saying, hey, I'm interested in this girl. Yeah, and I'm a sucker, so, you know, I go out with a few of them. And, oh, of course, yeah. you know. you got to throw them a bone every now and then. Well, yeah, you got to uh, that was, that was That was more uh, figurative, by the way. <laughs> uh, typical situations. Because we, we, every Thursday, we take calls, and there's always a guy talking about, there's this girl that I like, I want to get with her. Uh, do you find that, that, that you commonly are getting the same questions, or you're meeting the same type of person over and over again that needs advice? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there are tons of different questions, but you tend to get the same ones over and over. Right. Um, like, like, for example, I've got to imagine that so, there's got to be like a, a, enough people out there that, that see a girl and immediately freeze, so they just maybe kind of stare awkwardly at her from afar and never even have the confidence to go up to her, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I go to a lot of the cons for uh, Wizard, Wizard World Tours, and uh, a lot of guys will try to go up to girls, and they'll see them, and they'll just kind of freeze before they get to them, right. and then end up kind of gawking at them. And, then the girl realizes and gets a little freaked out. So that's usually not a good approach. Right. And then he follows her awkwardly around everywhere and waits yeah, for her outside the ladies' room, et cetera. Is there, is there any hope for those guys? Is there any advice you can give them? Yeah, uh, talk to the girl. Um, uh. You know, girls are people, you know. They're not 
freaks. They're not scary. See, that's a good point because I didn't find that out until I was 22. Yeah, it actually took me quite a while. Mom sat me down and let me know. It's, it's okay. Crazy. Yeah, it's okay we, to chat. We are them. people, so yeah, if you speak to us, well, we might speak back. Well, now, what if you speak to them about comics? I got to imagine, you know, being part of Wizard Online, you get a lot of guys who say, well, I, I, I want to talk to girls about comics, or I want to go and, and introduce them to comics. What can I do? Well, I mean, Obviously, if you go to a show or you go to a comic book shop or something, you see a girl there, you know, you have a good chance of meeting a girl who's into comics. Right. But a lot of times, the girl might be working there. So you don't want to overwhelm her with True. comic knowledge and, you know, what's going on in, you know, episode 417 of Star Trek or, right. you know. You, don't you remember frame out. three of issue 27? <laughs> That's not a good way to start off a, a casual conversation no, with, a, no, with a girl, it's, right? Yeah, usually not very impressive. Uh, do they, do they often test the girls? Like, do, do you think geek guys are, are they, when they, especially let's see, they, they see a woman in a comic shop, would they be apt to actually testing her knowledge, perhaps? Is that like a common mistake? I haven't seen too much of that. Um, I get that, but I bring it on myself, obviously, right. you know, asking. You're essentially asking but, for the punishment. Yeah. But generally, I don't think that that's a, too much. All right. Now, if a girl's not into comics, is there a way you can, uh, you know, kind of force it down her throat a little bit? Is there a way you can maybe swear <laughs> to the dark side? Well, you know, you can tie her up and, you know, just, Force her to read it, hold that's, it over that's, her face. That's the and... hottest advice I've ever received on the show. Thank you for that. Is, Some but, chicks are into it. I don't know. <laughs> the, the ones I'm interested in are, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so, but, but should, you, should you take that route, though, traditionally? Probably not. Um, no. I mean, if you want your girl to get into comics, there are different different ways of doing it, you know, to show her some here and there. good way is to maybe take her to some of the movies, take her to very mainstream movies. Right. I mean, like Spider-Man and... Whatnot. Oh, sure, let her see Sin City and then show her the graphic novel. Say, hey, look, this yeah. is what it's based on. Hey, you on. like that movie? Why don't you read about it? Or... Right. You like the movie? You'll love the book. <laughs> and then you do one of the pistol, the pistol fingers yeah, and the wink. She'll be really into that. that. Chicks works. love that when you do that. You know what else works? The half hawk. I like yours. That, oh, thank you. Thank you, by the way. I went a little less, a uh, little, little more faux today. But enough <laughs> about my hair. It, it's about, it's about our, our viewers. It's about our callers. And we have some on the line who want to ask you some questions. So all right. If it's all right, we're going to field some. We're going to start off by Andy. He joins us on the phone from St. Louis, Missouri. Are you there, Andy? Yes, I am, and I'm freaking out right now oh. because there's a big, I just heard on the news, there was a big Amish uprising uh, here in Missouri, and wow. and uh, governor, the governor of Missouri put a stop to it. He did the right thing, and once more the Sith will rule Missouri. Right. Now, see, do you get, do you get guys like that often? <laughs> I mean, there's no yeah, hope for him, sadly. essentially, right? There's just there's no hope for guys like that, right? I don't know what to what say to him. <laughs> you, you, all right. I'm moderately interested. But, uh, Mead joins us on the phone from <laughs> Carlton, uh, Georgia, I believe. Mead, are you there? Yeah, hey. Mead, hey, uh, have you escaped the Amish uprising? Are you safe, my friend? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fine. All right. Um, well, Deirdre would like to hear a question, so if you have one for her, let's, let's get to it. Okay. I like this girl, and uh, she um, sort of has a boyfriend, so how do I steal her away from... Uh, her boyfriend. Ooh. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of effed up. First of all, try to steal the girl away. <laughs> that is a little, a little, little <laughs> effed, as we say in the business. <laughs> but, uh, but let's just say he's, he wants to go through with it. I mean, a woman can't be stolen unless she wants to be taken, right? Exactly. That's, what exactly. I, that's how I justify it. Well, uh, what, are, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? I would first suggest talking to her and seeing what her feelings are about him because right. he can't steal her if she doesn't have any interest in him, obviously. True. So, I would say talk to her and then, you know, I don't know, get some buddies to knock the guy out. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, well, Hire a hitman. You'll be fine. She'll cry for like a week, but she'll need somebody to rebound. Well, ultimately, it will be her decision and her job to break up with the other guy. But, you know, he's got to win her over if he wants her. That's... So work hard. Yeah. Protect her from the Amish resolution, and she'll, yeah. she'll, she'll thank you. Revolution, for that matter. Deirdre, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. Excellent, excellent advice. Be sure to visit AskDeirdre.com to read her weekly column and ask questions for, you know, that, that friend who always strikes out with women. That friend. Now, we haven't heard enough from you guys today. We got some chat questions in order. It's all coming up after this. Be careful out there, folks. Attack of the Attack. Attack. All right, IRC chat room. What are they saying? All right, first question from Ageless. Where will we be without the infinite wisdom of Mr. Mm. Miyagi? We will not know the, the proper method of painting a fence. Wax I think people know, how to, people know how to wax on, 
but not wax off. I know how to wax off. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> we know. Hmm. Next question, Sarah Lane. Okay, Sir Blah 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 wants to know, does <laughs> AMCS think that the Blu-ray HD DVD will really make the PS3 better than 360s? Oh, that's such, a, that's such a that's such a loaded question. That's right, it. We'll sorry. see you tomorrow. See you. I'll explain later. Thanks for our guest here to Brooks. See you tomorrow. Take care. <laughs> Computers on Attack of the Show provided by Intel. Game on. Power up. Take control with the Intel Pentium Processor Extreme Edition.